Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uh, today is a, is a new day, and I know a lot of things are going out for, on for the world, but you know what? God woke us up this morning. He allowed us to be in our right minds. There was no accidents or mishaps, and you know what? This is a reason that this is why we celebrate God. This Every day is a celebration, but we celebrate God because he's been truly good to us. There's a baby in the room. There's babies in the room, and you know what? That That's new life. And hallelujah, we got young adults in the room, and we got senior, uh, seasoned adults in the room. So you know what? We just we have a reason to celebrate, to be thankful. I was walking my dog this morning around 4 o'clock, and I was just thanking the Lord that I felt the cool air upon my face. You know, some people don't have feelings. Some people can't even see. They can't hear. They can't walk. They don't have no limbs. But you know what? God has blessed us, and we have a right to raise our hands to lift our voice and to give God glory. Amen. Uh, uh, I'm going to read my first scripture and then I'll pray uh, coming out of the book of Psalms, the hundredth number. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be ye thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. Amen. And that's a place that you need to just thank the Lord because his truth endures to all generations. No matter what man may say, God is true. Amen. And anything contrary to God, it's a lie. Amen. Let's bow our heads in the presence of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for this morning. We praise you for the activity of our lens, for opening our eyes this morning, that you are our alarm clock. We are up because of you, O oh God. God, we give you glory, O oh God. We lift up our hands in praise and worship to you, O oh God. Lord, we ask that you would clear our hearts and our minds, that you would forgive us of any transgressions, our iniquities, or sins, O oh God, that we may have committed and Lord we did not ask you for forgiveness wash us right now oh God cover us under the blood of Jesus oh God Lord that you would clear us right now oh God that we would hear a word of healing this morning a word of deliverance oh God Lord a word that will set us free from bondage this morning that you would break every yoke this morning oh God Lord loose the shackles off our feet oh God off our hands oh God God Lord, that we would praise you, O oh God. Lord, that you would unmute our mouth, that we would give you glory, honor, and praise this morning, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God. Uh, send your word, O oh God, to every need that's in the room, O oh God. Every need that we have, that we're dealing with, O oh God. On our jobs, O oh God. In the schoolhouse, O oh God. Lord, in the grocery store, with our government, O oh God. In our communities, O oh God. Lord, that you would send a word word of healing, O oh God, a word of deliverance, O oh God, a word of peace, O oh God, Lord, a word of protection, O oh God, send a word, O oh God, that will carry us through, O oh God, that we would testify of your goodness, uh, that we would continue to worship you, that we would continue to praise you, O oh God, for you are so worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, O oh God, have your way, O oh God as the man of God breaks the word of God open to us today, oh God. Lord, make it plain that we would understand it, oh God. Lord,
why even the babies would understand it, that there would be joy in the atmosphere, oh God. Lord, there's a releasement, oh God, in the atmosphere, oh God, because God, you have released your word upon your people, oh God. There is help, oh God. There is healing, oh God. There's deliverance, oh God. There is joy, oh God. Lord, there is abundance, oh God. There is a release, oh God. God, have your way this morning, oh God. Lord, allow your presence, oh God, to fill this place, oh God. Allow your spirit, oh God, to engulf us, oh God, to have its way in our lives, oh God, to take control, oh God, of our praise and of our worship, oh God. Lord, that we would give you glory, that we would testify that we've been in the presence of the Lord. We give you glory, all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. amen. Now, y'all pray with me. I'm going to try to give y'all something now. I don't know how good it's going to be, but, you know, y'all just work with me. Amen. Y'all, uh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, say, say. Yes, I will say that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. The day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen, amen. Now, you know, I know that y'all y'all can't see it out there in Facebook and YouTube, but the babies are in the back room just dancing because this is the day that the Lord has made. And when the babies is dancing, man, can we dance for the Lord? Yeah, my heart was just jumping. The babies were dancing because this is truly the day that the Lord has made. Man, we will rejoice. I, I just want to just encourage you because the word is on its way. In about 60 seconds, you won't see me. You'll see the man of God, but the word is on its way. And if you're looking for a word today, it's on its way. Because God hears your prayers. He knows your requests. He knows every need. He knows every desire. And do not take it for granted. God hears you you. And now I would like to present to others, uh, to some, and introduce to others the man of the hour, our own Pastor Dana Jones. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank and pray. Thank you. Praise God for being here this morning. Praise God. Amen. God has been good. Thank you, Elder Harrison. 
Praise God. We thank God for all of you being here today. Praise God. God has been good to us. Amen. And so we're, we're glad and shouting glad for what God is doing. And we thank God for you. Before we really get into this, we want to say thank you for those who contributed to our building fund or the, or the, um, the church anniversary. And we thank God for you. Near and far, those that uh, supported us with funds praise god your finances we want to say thank you we appreciate you and what you do for us amen from houston texas all the way amen to the west praise god we thank god for you all who contributed to us and i thank god for what i love my i was thinking this morning i love my uh, reno family they are so dear to my heart and i miss them Amen. praise god and so thank god for you you and you and again thank you here who support this ministry and we thank god Amen. for you you and you and we're praying for you for great success Amen. and those that may be Amen. tuning in this morning you have uh, our the location where we're coming from this morning we're coming from psalms 24 and we're going to try to deal with the whole 10 verses and i think we can get through it Praise God, if you all pray for me, Amen. I pray that something would be said this morning that would enlighten you. And if it don't, praise God, I still have done my job if it make you mad. Praise God, the word of God, the scripture tells us it comes to offend. It comes to Amen. make you mad. It comes to make you think. And in hopes, as Johnny Washington say, in hopes of it making you mad and to make you want to get saved. Amen. Praise God. And this song has been on my heart all week, and I hope I can do it justice. <laughs> Praise God. And it goes like this. Oh, sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder, Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love him, Jesus, the Son of God. Praise God. Amen. I didn't do it like, amen, the songsters did it, but it's been on my heart. Oh, sweet wonder. Praise God. Amen. God comes to dwell in our hearts. He comes to make us sensitive to him. And I thank God for what God has done in my life. Praise God. Let's go before the throne of grace. God, I truly thank you this morning and I lift you up. We come boldly to the throne of grace this morning. For God, no matter how well off we're doing, we still need your help. We still need your guidance, oh God. We still need you to be in the forefront of our lives. For the days of wicked, man's minds and hearts are deceitfully wicked. And we need you in a day and a time like this. We, God, oh God, who trust you and believe in you, we need directions today. David said, be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We need guidance today in a world like today, God. We need you and we trust you even right now. We bind, oh God, every imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Your word is true, God, and we trust you this morning. We believe in you, God. We've come back just to give you glory. We come back to give you honor, God. And so we thank you even right now. Help us today in this word that we might deliver it. God, help us today. We need you right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. Thank God. Amen and amen. By way of another announcement, I'm sorry that we are or Missionary Harrison is part of LifeHouse. And what they're doing is they're collecting baby items for those who are without. And so if you would like to support them, please use the cash app on the screen and make sure you annotate it or, or yeah, annotate it that it's for LifeHouse. And we will get those funds or we will purchase the necessary things for those children 
who are without today. And so if you would do that, we would be so grateful and we would be so kind. And if you wanted to, you could put Jackie Harrison, missionary Jackie Harrison in the notes. And so we would see that she would get that for those children. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Psalms 24. Uh-huh. Psalms <clears throat> 24. And I really didn't get a jumping off point. I guess I did, but let me read it and then we'll go back. So Psalms 24. Let's go all the way down to the 10th verse. Not a lot. And mind you, uh, I might have to have y'all move over, a couple of y'all move, or Benjamin move over, because y'all going to help me at the end, not now, at the end of this, y'all going to help me. Yeah, y'all going to be able to talk today, and we're going to get y'all to, to speak about this today, because we're coming to a fork in the road nowadays, come on, y'all say amen, amen. Uh, that we need to know who this person is. Right. And my theme for the day says, who is your king? Hmm. Who is your king? And then go down to the last verse, or last, is that right? Verse, yeah. yeah. Hmm. And say with me right there where it says he. It says, he is the king of glory. Mm -hmm. He is the king of glory. Uh-huh. It says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Somebody say me. me. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? That's a question. It's a question to you. It's a question to the reader. Who, who will ascend? Well, can I ascend? Uh, I'm going to prove to you, you you're going to have to ascend. Uh -huh. Or who shall stand in his holy place? Who going to stand? Who going to stand in God's holy place? Don't just look to the preacher. and jump to the, I'm, it's, He's talking to the believer today. Right. Who's going to stand in his holy place? Or who shall stand in his holy place? For says... He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. I have to stop there because this is, to give you a little background, this here is uh, a song, if you would, or some poetry. It, it was not always one scripture. It's divided into uh, what they would call two stanzas. And so there's a first part. I would say three, but there's a part one and there's a part two in the confines of Psalms 24. Mm -hmm. Here, when we look at this, we find that there's questions asked. David is asking some questions to the people of God today. Mm -hmm. So I want you to bring your minds in today and that, that the questions may penetrate your soul and your mind because uh, times are changing. And as we look out in the world, young people, I know my kids used to say, I used to tell them, y'all need to look at the news. And they used to say, we don't want to look at no news, but we must look at the news to be informed as to what's going on. We can no longer walk around as a people blinded to what's going on. My parents used to always tell us, uh, young men, that we should always walk around. Well, we don't do that no more, but it's still the same concept with a newspaper and the Bible. So that we could deal with the world's problems with God's word. And so you need to look at the news so you can see what's going on because you will find out that a lot of the questions that are being asked, they're being portrayed or they're being worked out in our very sights today. Mm. How can we go day by day and not realize that, man, there's something going on? Even on, 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 you find out that there's killing, there's stealing, that there's raping. That uh, who would cut up his girlfriend? My God, if I don't like you no more, I just leave you. I'm gonna cut you up if I can't have you. Nobody. Else. That's a twisted mind. Is that right? 
And so we go along with this and we go along with it so much that uh, sometimes we are partakers of other man's sin. But we have to look at this stanza and look at how David deals with uh, this part of this poem or this song that's being sung. As he deals with it, uh -huh, he, uh, he talks about who is God. Uh -huh. The earth is the Lord's. You know, we take it for granted. We, we go outside and we say it's cold and then we, we say it's hot. But when we really come to ourselves, we could really face the fact that God created all this. This season that we're going through, and, and, and I, I'm telling you right now, y'all know I don't like Houston humidity. You could get rid of it, and, and I'd give it 100%. Right now it's at 99 because of the humidity. But when we walk out, God has put all this together. Mm -hmm. It says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All, matter of fact, let's do it like this. The chair you sitting in, God put it here. Amen. Amen. Uh huh. Amen. The clothes that we wear, it was already here. Amen. Matter of fact, Israel used to make their clothes out of goats, uh, leech, uh, lambs' hair. Put it together, and they would wove it together to make clothes. And and all of a sudden, we don't realize, or we take it for granted, that the earth is the Lord's, yes. and the fullness of the earth. It's God's. Mm -hmm. So God has created it. We have to come to the realization of Genesis that, that God created what? The heavens and the earth. We don't give God glory like we should. We, we don't give God praise like we should because we should enter into the house as a people of God, as a unit of God, ready to praise God and ready to lift God up because God has done so much for us. I always talk about folk while I'm preaching, and so shorty, today is your day. <laughs> I, I was watching the special, and I, I was watching the uh, uh, 1619 uh, project on Hulu, and, and, and I was at a function, at a part of it, that they were talking about how the women were dying or losing children in childbirth. Come on, that should make you raise your hand and go, Hallelujah. She's giving birth to three beautiful babies and, and God allowed you to come through unscathed. And so beside your husband, you should be giving God glory. You, you should be thanking God because God seen you through it. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It belongs to God. My God, thank you, Jesus. We should walk in our homes and thank God. Mm, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Oh my God, I'm sorry today, but, but it's, it's all belongs to God. And, and I'm grateful to God for all that he's doing in my life. And so we look at it again and we talk about John, First John. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same that was in the beginning. It, it was God. It's strange how, as I thought and I looked at this and I said, how do we come up with a Big Bang Theory? And, and they said that, uh, uh, you know, they have no evidence. But then all of a sudden they'll come over to the Christian nation and say, y'all got no evidence. I got evidence. I'm standing right here in the flesh, grandbabies and a wife. And uh -huh, I got evidence. You just don't have no evidence. And so here he begins to talk about God and talks about the greatness of God. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. God established it, created it, and designed it. He deals uh, here as he goes on. He wants to lay the foundation of who God is. I like it when Paul says, you know what, if you still are undecided as to who God is and you still don't get it in your mind that he created the heavens and the earth, Paul says in my words, he says, even nature, you walk outside and you look at the trees and you look at the clouds and you look at the blue sky, even nature testifies about God. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah! Praise God. I, I don't need to show you a sign that God has already did it. You want a sign? 
go and look at the trees and go and look at the, the atmosphere. Uh, the preachers used to always talk about that the, 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 the stars are still sitting in their silver socket and you can't really see it here. But if you go out in the country, you can look up. You can see all the greatness and the beauty of God. We, we don't really see it because we got too many lights. But when you go out in the desert, there is no light but God's light. Yes. My God, you can see the sun and you can see the Milky Way and you, you can see them stars just doing this. Yes. If you can't even believe the word of God, Paul says, I challenge you to look at nature itself. We, we take for granted that the grass is green. We even take for granted the desert places in life. Because yes, God created it. God created the earth is the Lord's. Yes. He designed rain and he designed sun and humidity. He designed it. So here when we look at that part of the stanza about uh, uh, the poem of God and who he is, he, he talks about another thing that we never like to deal with as humans. But here we're going to have to deal with it because we plan on leaving here and seeing the judge. I know we said, well, I'm not worried about that right now. But you know what my mama used to tell me? He used to say, she said, Dana, there's as many small graves as there is long graves. Mm -hmm. That means we could leave any minute. We could leave any time. Yeah, you're trying to scare the folks. No, it's called preparation. I'm trying to prepare you for something that's coming. There's a, uh, let me say it like that. There's a whirlwind coming and, and there's a mighty awesome God coming. Jesus is coming back for his bridegroom. Will you be ready when he comes? Here he talks about in verse 4, he says, he that have, uh, he says in the third verse, now that I know, now that I'm telling you who God is, and now that I've explained who God is, and he says, now, who, who can stand? Mm. Who can stand in his sanctuary? In this holy place, who can stand? Yeah. And I hear folks saying in my mind, well, ain't nobody righteous. Oh, the Bible declares, oh, yeah, a little true fact that we were born and shaped in iniquity and our mother conceived us. But there's a point in time that you just have to draw a line in the sand and say, God is greater than sin. God, God is greater than the devil. And so here he says, who can stand in this holy place? Though some would say nobody is worthy and we're not worthy, but I want to let you know today that God has made us worthy. That we could stand in the holy place. Now, mind you, when you go back, you have to reference what does he mean by holy and what does he mean by, you know, uh, being holy in this, uh, in this place. Well, uh, the Bible says that the priests had to be holy uh -huh, before they enter in the most holy of holies. There was a bell tied to him. There was a rope tied to his leg. Just in case he sinned, right. he would fall dead and they would have to drag him out That's right. because he wasn't holy. Somewhere or another that we've allowed the devil to come and says, you know, I don't have to be holy. I, I, I just don't have to. I, I can do what I want to do. He asked a question, this is eons ago, baby. This is not yesterday, and this is not something that I just thought of. But we're looking at the prophet of God. We're looking at King, God, King David, God's servant. And he says, look, you can't just come in the Holy of Holies any old kind of way. Right. But we've allowed the world to come in and say, I'm okay, but you're not okay. Hmm. He says, how can we do it? He says, he that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Mm -hmm. I got to do a little reading here so y'all bear with me. Y'all can probably find it faster on your phones. But that's okay. We're going to read it. Because if I read it, you can't say you didn't hear it. Romans 14 and 23. 
And it says, And he that doubteth is damned if he eateth. Now it's talking about eating, but it's still talking about having faith in God. Uh -huh, because he eateth not of faith. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Wait a minute, did you hear that? What is not of faith is sin. We're talking about this part of the stanza talking about being holy and, and coming into the most holy of holies, into God's presence. And we want God's presence to be with us. But we're still dibbly, dibbly I can't say the word, dibby dabbling in other stuff. But then we want God to come to our rescue. Yes. Yes, help us. We, we want God to help us. But God says, you, you have to be holy to stand in this place. Mind you, I'm not talking about just standing in the church house and standing behind this podium because anybody can stand behind the podium, but we're talking about in the presence of Almighty God. It ain't talking about just coming through the doors. It's talking about uh -huh, those that worship God. Mm -hmm. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh huh. We 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 can't be half steppers in this. We said I have to say, God fix me that I might be able to stand. Uh huh. James four and seventeen. James four and seventeen says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And we just say, well, I'm just good all by myself. Now, this is me, and it may not be you, but first of all, this is the word of God. Amen. You know, I could be at work. It says, he that knoweth to do good and do it not, it is sin. I could see a piece of paper on the floor in the kitchen. I didn't put it there. Right, right. The janitor can pick it up, but I'll pick it up. I mean, that's how sensitive I am to this scripture right here. He that knoweth to do good and doeth not, to him it is sin. <laughs> well, Brother Jones, that, that's simple stuff. You, that, that can't put you in hell. It says, he that knoweth to do good and don't do it. I mean, let your mind wonder. <laughs> let your mind wonder. And, and then we want to say, well, who then can be saved? Right here. He that have clean hands. Uh -huh. He that accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. Amen. You can't accept Jesus and you, you still teetotaling. Right. You got a fifth of vodka down. You, you can't do that. All right. Let me go on. Because y'all going to say I'm taking too long. All right. First John. 5 and 17. 1 John 5 and 17. I'm talking about the stanza this morning that David is talking about entering in uh, uh, God's presence. But we here today, God is supposed to be here living in us. He said, Paul, he told Paul, uh, uh, Paul says, Know ye not that the Holy Ghost dwelleth in you? You're supp we're supposed to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be the temple that he dwells in. Wait a minute. The Holy Ghost is the, one of the spirits of God. Amen. He's the third person in the Trinity. Amen. Hello. And so he didn't come back to dwell in an unclean temple. Amen. But we want to keep our temple dirty and filthy and nasty. And we'll say, oh God, here I am. Answer my need. And we don't realize, you know, this always gets me because when we talked about connecting the dots, I think I got it. Because I can't judge God on what I have. Woo! But I can judge God on my relationship. My God from heaven. I could have ten Bentleys outside and not know God. Come on, y'all say amen. amen. I could have $100,000 in the bank and not know God. Somebody can come up and give us whatever we think is great. If we're not serving God and we don't have the spirit of God, that don't mean God is in our presence because we got things. Amen. This is where the, the, the rubber meets the road that, that we have to draw the line in the sand. Who is your king? 
That's a question for the day. Who's your king and who 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 are you living to? Now I, I, I forgot to deal with this. A king. A king is someone that rules a country or a nation. They have all the rights and the privileges. But not only that, they govern the military. They govern the government. And the, the I want to say the, uh, uh, I want to say something else. But who's the, who's the people at the bottom like we are? Who's the people? The subjects, yeah. They govern the subjects. What did he say? I started to say that, but I didn't. You said it. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, that's the job of the king. He governs the nation. He governs the country. Again, let me say this. Who's your king? Who's governing your life? Who's governing the things that you do? Mm -hmm. This king has all power and he has military power and he, he can strike at any time. And it's kind of like our president. You know, we, we could say he don't have a lot of authority, but you, one authority we he do have, he could say hit the button and, and it's all good. But the king governs uh, the people right. and the military. And so then, today, who is your king? You, you have to decide that. And so here in 1 John 5 and 17, it says, All unrighteousness is... And there is a sin not unto yeah. still a sin. Right. That's what we have to come to grips in our life. Right. Did I sin against Elder Harrison? That's why the Bible talks about forgiveness, how good it is. Amen. He could sin against me 490 times. I got to say, I forgive you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we do that because God is our king. God has forgiven us for numerous of things. You know, I ain't done nothing if you ran a red light. Amen. If you thought ill. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to do what my mama told me to do. I remember one time I got in trouble and they said, you know, y'all allow me to tell my stories. I remember when I was living, uh, honey, around the corner from Bell Haven. I think that was Chilco. And anyway, I was a little boy. My mama told me to do something, right? And so I was in my room, but you had to, where my room was, you go out into the hallway, and then you kind of cut through the living room and cut through the kitchen, right? And I was a little boy. I don't remember how old I was. And my mama did, told me to do something. I went, I licked my tongue out of her, right? <laughs> and she caught me as she was going to the kitchen. I got in trouble. I, got, I think I had to stay in the room all that whole day. But all unrighteousness is sin. It doesn't matter how how small it is. I've sinned against my mother. Oh, you can't you can't count that as a sin. I did opposite of what she told me to do. It was a sin. So I sinned against my mom. But anyway, as we look at this, we find out that that we have to get rid of our sin that we might stand in the holy place of God. I don't care what you taught or what been said. You have to stand in the holy place of God. The same folk is supposed to be holy. We stand in a place of representing heaven. Hmm. The Bible declares that we are ambassadors for God. And as ambassadors, we have to realize what we're doing and how we're doing. We have to remember that standing uh -huh. In the place that God has called us. Now everybody's saying, you know, I'm saved and I believe in Christ. And, you know, we just lie in wonders every day. We lie to ourselves every day. And the only reason why we ain't been take that, taken out of here uh, like the Old Testament is because God is long-suffering. You know how we is. We, right now we long-suffering with our kids. We may put them on punishment, and then, you know how it is in our hearts. See, we have to think like God a, a little bit, if y'all don't mind. You know, we say, man, I sure hated to punish my son, and, and all the kids are outside playing, and I hated to do it, but he upstairs just moping, and I want to let him outside, but I can't show a sign of weakness, and, you know, I, I can't do that because he'll figure he could get away with everything, but, you know, but, but God is different. Right now in this dispensation of grace, God says, I'm going to let you go and get away with it. I, I'm, I'm going to let you. Right now, I, you, you okay? And in some cases, let me take that back. In some cases, 
Because in some cases, you do something, you be like, oh, Lord, I'm suffering because of that lie I told. My God, I'm just, oh, jeez. If I could go back and take it back, I'd be like, <laughs> I had been going through all this. Uh, but but in, in most cases, God is long-suffering. He allow us to get away with stuff and, and he just says, I'm giving you time to repent. He has to give us time to repent because in Revelation, he told them uh, that to go and, and repent. Amen. He says, I want you to go and repent. You've left your first love. And that's what we do. That's all we do here as saints of God. Folk think they're getting away because they've done us wrong. we 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 just long-suffering. Right. Right. We're taking it on the chin. The Bible says, great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And so that's where we are. Here, when it talks about, uh, it says, here in James, y'all know I've been at this one. First James, uh, James 1 and 27, pure religion and undefiled before God the Father is this. So you want to be saved, and you want to be delivered, and you, you want to be holy, here it is. It says, to visit Mm -hmm. The fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep thyself unspotted from the world. Well, you know Beyonce coming to town and I got to do my little do. Don't nobody have to know. Sister, don't tell nobody. You know, I know we on the, you know, the, the women of mighty creation. But, you know, well, we can get rid We can do away with this today. Beyonce in town, girl. What does Beyonce have to do with the church? Hmm. What does she have to do with it? I'm not. I mean, she doing what she do. I mean, you got to give her her props, right? She doing what she do. But what does she have to do with righteousness, faithfulness, uh, modesty? <laughs> Hello. What does she have to do with that? Well, who are you, Brad Jones? Well, I'm an ambassador of God. I've got all rights to talk about it. Give what you say. You, you, you can't put out the word of God like you do. <sighs> you can't brush it off like you do those sins that you figure, you know, Jesus, you, you know, I'm going down to the, to the club and you, you wait outside and I'll be right back. And when you go, okay, Jesus, I'm done. Come on, let's go. Come on, Jesus. And we want to drag Jesus in every raggedy place we go to. And then we, we want to call on God. God, I need you today. I'm going through. Really? Hmm. Here he discusses uh, those that will stand in the holy place of God. Is it he that receiveth the blessing from the Lord is righteousness from God of his salvation. God wants to be uh, blessings to us. Let me see if I can read it because I know I got... Uh, um, um, um. Let me digress, because I got something else I need to add to this. And so, the, the, does the scholar say in verses 3 and 4, he talks about uh, being holy unto God. Now, mind you, I've read the story, and so if you read the story, you'll get an idea of what the, uh, the, 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 the commentator is talking about. He's talking about 2 Samuel. 6 and 12, how the ark of God was being brought back from Obed-Edom's house back unto the city of David, or Zion. Because what happened was is that as they uh, called themselves bringing the Ark of the Covenant, which housed God, they put it on a new cart. And as they were going along, uh, the, 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 the mule stumbled. And the Ark of the Covenant was going to fly off the wagon. And so one of the guards reached out that he might prevent the Ark of God from falling to the ground. But he died. That's a story all by itself. You can't misuse God's word. You can't misuse God at any time. It's not permitted. But wait a minute. If he was a loving God, no, God has rules and standards. Right. You know what you're, you know, I, I, I was watching on the other day and I was watching this little flick and, and, and the young man, he was doing a, a what do you call that? Like, kind of like TikTok. And so he was saying, he was like this, doing a selfie and he was pointing. He said, Every black person know what that mean, right? And every black person know what that mean. Well, the street light was on. If you didn't, my mama said when the street light come on, you better be in the house. How about you, Catherine? No? Oh, okay. I thought you. 
But he said, every, every, everybody know of African American. When the street light come on, you better be in the house. Here we have a young man who thought he was doing something good that he might stop the ark of God from falling, but God killed him. That's really dealing with the righteousness of God. But here when you look at it, when you talk about cleaning, David went back down because Obed-Edom had the Ark of the Covenant because David got, he called himself getting mad at God. Well, God, if you're going to be killing people, I don't want the Ark. Well, you ain't got to have it. You, you ain't, you ain't got to worship God. You're wasting your time anyway if you ain't doing it for the right reason. But when David got word back that the ark of God was being a blessing to Obed-Edom, David said, I, I got to go back and get it. It's rightfully mine. I got to go back and get it. And when David went back and got it, he carried it back home the right way. He put it on poles and they carried it back uh, into the house of God. Amen. That they would be blessed again. Amen. I wanted to bring that out. If we want to carry the vessels of God, God will bless us, but we have to be holy and righteous. Let's do it the right way and stop saying uh, right is wrong and wrong is right. right. Amen. And stop saying, oh, oh, well, this is not how I think. It's not about you. That's right. you go, I, I haven't found anywhere in the Bible God says, well, what do you think about this? Right. If you show me a script, well, what about this? It's in the lost books. Well, go find the lost book and bring it at least. Let me read it. Well, God sat down and said, well, you know what? I just, maybe man should have three ears. I don't know. What, what do you think about that? I, I never found that anywhere. God just did what he had to do. And so uh, we can't have vanity and deceitfulness in our lives. It says, he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. Amen. There's a blessing to being saved. Thank you. That's why he says, I love it, when he says, uh, 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 seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Then he says, all this stuff will be added. That's why we can't count on or look at people with great wealth because we, we don't know what their life is. And then a lot of times you don't even know what they had to do to get it. Right. -hoo. I wish I had a house like that. Mm, I don't know. God, the concept is good, but I don't know what they did for it. That Bentley looked good, but I don't know how, how many you know things they had to do to get it. So here he talks about receiving the righteousness of God. Okay, Benjamin, I think I need you to move. All right. Praise God. I want to enact this because we can get, I'm thinking, maybe a better, uh, a better feel for what God is talking about here. So when we look at part two of this stanza, and we're still talking about who is your king. We have to come to the realization who is our king. Who do we give allegiance to? Right. See, because if you were, uh, uh, we talked about, I think we talked about Daniel somewhere in our Bible study, that y you may lose your head for the allegiance you give. That's right. Because Daniel had some enemies, and, and it was either he was going to uh, bow down to the king's image, or he was going to be true to God. Right. You, you either going to lose your head and not be... Uh -huh. Not be the popular one. Yeah. Well, you're going to stand for God. That God may get the glory out of your life. Mm -hmm. So here it goes like this. And I want to end it like this. Let me see. <clears throat> we have two parts here. And this is basically dealing with uh, uh, David coming back with the Ark of the Covenant. But David is coming back to the city. And as David is coming back to the city, there's some, you know, we, we have call and response song. God is a good God. Well, God is a good God. So we're going to have a call and response. I want everybody playing. All right. Y'all going to play with me? All right. So here it goes something like this. Here they come back from the war. Or here they come back from gathering up. 
uh, the ark of God. And then my crew over here is going to uh, uh, cry out to the, uh, 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 to the city of David or to Zion. All right. And so he says here, he says, y'all read it. It's number seven. Read it loud. Not everybody. No, no, no. Wait, wait, hold it. Let me go back. This side is going to do the call, and this side is going to do the response, okay? Th this is what they're doing when they're coming back from the war. Okay, go ahead. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up for everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come. Now, here they come. They're coming back to the city, and they, they've already announced who God was, but, but they're saying, hey, lift up the gates. But they're literally saying, lift up the gates. And they say, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up. And the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. And then on the 8, it says what? Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong. Wait, wait. No, no, y'all say, y'all only ask the question and then stop. So do it again. Who is this king of glory? And then y'all say. In battle, okay? And then it says, then you keep going on, then you says, keep going, 19, 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Now they saying, now we opening up the gate and y'all calling us, and then the response is, number 10 is what? Who is this king of glory? And then y'all reply back? The Lord of hosts. Who is your king? Mm -hmm. They said, who is this king of glory? The Lord God Almighty. Yes, yes. Who is God in our life? Yes. Who's God in your life? Who's the king of your life? Who are you giving precedence over with your life? Yes. Mm -hmm. Shorty, uh, you love your husband, but God comes before us. Benjamin, you love your wife, but see, we, we miss it when we say that because people are thinking about it in the terms of me, myself, and I, and, and we're greedy, and we're selfish, and, and what we do is, if I serve God first, it allows me to love my wife. If I serve God first, it allows me to love my husband, but, but there is, I want to let you know, a spot in your life, and there's a spot in your heart that even your husband and your wife can't get to it. It's called your soul. And, and God wants to touch your soul. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord God Almighty. He is the King of Glory. Who's your King? That's the question for the day. Who's your King? I can. I have to honor my wife if I honor my King. Y'all didn't get it. I've got to honor my son. I know he always get tired of me. I say, son, you doing okay? You doing all right? Why am I doing that? Because I'm honoring God. Right. Son, you doing okay? Everything all right? Shorty, everything okay over there? I used to ask her, but I said, well, he turned out real good, so I don't have to ask her that no more. He turned out good. But who? when we start serving our king, we can serve one another. We can give reverence to one another. That's why it talks about uh, uh, we being the family of God. Uh huh. We tighter than our own folk. Yeah, we was told a long time ago, y'all love them church folks, love more than you love. That's okay. Yeah. When you get saved, you'll get an understanding, the love that we have one for another. Oh, yeah. yeah. When we allow God to come in and he become our king, baby. Woo, my God. Things will begin to work together. Not that I'm not going to have problems and situations. They're going to come. But I can have the problems and situations in my life and knowing that God going to handle them. Why? Because he is my king. Amen. Amen. He going to handle all my business yes, that I need handled. We're standing. I went over a little bit. I'm sorry. Who is your king? Who's your king? Today we have to decide who our king is. And we have to make a decision in our own hearts. If we're going to serve the king or not. And so today, you might have fell short or you might not be where you need to be. I want you to come. We're going to pray today.